The year is 1947. America was just coming out of World War II and was becoming the economic superpower it is today. It needed a workhorse to move itself forward, and in that time, Ford released this, the F1 half-ton pickup truck. This model is a 1949. However, this is a little bit different than what was released all those years ago. You see, this one has a 5.9 liter Cummings diesel running a compound turbocharger setup, and it makes over 2,000 pound-feet of torque at the rear wheels, which is why we've decided to come to a place up in Northern California that lets us sample all this. In the brown grass, on a skid pad, in the sunshine, I have been looking forward to driving this thing for a very long time. So stay tuned for a very fun, slippery and slidery House of Muscle episode. The man who created this madness? That's Scott Birdsall, the owner of Chuckles Garage in Santa Rosa, California. I bought it for 225 bucks off Craigslist, and I wanted to just flip it because I had no intent for it. I'm like, 225 bucks, I'll throw it on the side yard, I'll clean it up, and I'll flip it on Craigslist for a couple grand and I'll make a little money. The truck grew on me, and I said, you know what, I, I like this truck. I'm gonna make a shop truck out of it. We'll put like a Cummins diesel in it and make it super reliable. And along the way, one little mod added to another one and bigger brakes meant bigger wheels and tires and I wanted more power. So then I put a bigger turbo on it and then, and then I decided I wanted even more power. So then it had twin turbos. I couldn't stop. And then I saw things I could improve. You know, it went from a $225 Craigslist truck to a $300,000 plus something. I still don't know what to call it. It's just mean. I, I don't really get speechless. This thing is just a masterpiece. You gotta see the engine. Yeah, dude, the first time I saw this, I was kind of blown away because you can't not stare at it. Give everybody an idea of how this thing gets motivated. Compound turbocharging. This turbocharger here is an 80 millimeter turbo. It's the small turbo. Right. And this one works off exhaust gases from the engine, okay. just like a regular turbo does. Right. But the difference here is this turbo also drives this bigger turbo here, which is a 94 millimeter Garrett GTX. And so this turbo returns the favor by driving the 80 millimeter from the front side as well. So instead of breathing atmosphere like a regular turbo system, this, this turbo breathes, you know, 40 PSI of boost from this big turbo. And so 40 PSI here and 60 PSI here ends up being 100 at the plenum. Oh my God. When you were developing this, when you were building it, you kind of had this idea in your head to do this system where people are like, yeah, that's not gonna work. That I had way. tons of naysayers tell me that this big of compounds would not work. They say it would be laggy and it would never spool. And this thing actually spools pretty quick. So what type of numbers did it make on the dyno? This thing makes 1,463 flywheel and 1,233 at the wheels. Jesus. So, oh my and, God. And double in, double double in torque. Yep. That's very cool, man. Let's take a look at the rear. Yeah, dude. Let's see. So now the nitrous. Have you ever decided to hit that button? We have on the dyno a little bit. It's good for another you know, 350, 375 horsepower. The way that the cage is designed, as an engineer, is this something you actually sat and designed in CAD and then incorporated into the truck? Was it more freeform? I mean, how do you come up with this? The strongest part right here is all designed for all the, the torque and twisting okay. that, the, that the rear axle is gonna apply to it. You know, there's really no concessions for anything street right. car on this truck. Right. It's a pure race vehicle and it just happens to be licensed. I was gonna say, you have plates on it. Yeah, it's got plates. Yeah. So you fabricated all of this? Yes. The big Cummins engine is really hard to fit in this truck. Okay. So two thirds of the engine is behind the firewall. I had to make a custom oil pan with custom baffles in it, just a clearance, because the factory one hung down another eight inches. Just about zero suspension droop in this thing. Yeah, it's, no. it's a road racer. It's an inch and a half of droop and an inch and a half of travel. Oh, so this is a Kevlar blanket to keep the transmission bits from 
coming inside and taking you out, horribly maiming you in mm. case of a transmission failure. I mean, just to look at, this is beautiful. Yeah, this Between is where it gets complicated back here. Yeah, but man, is it nice. Winner's Custom made this rear end for the truck. A 10 and a half inch ring gear. It's called their super heavy duty quick change. Okay. It's well, nice because we can throw any gear we want in it because sometimes we'll road race it, sometimes we'll take it out right. and drift it, and then we'll land speed race it. You designed all this, fabricated yes. all the four link? The, everything. Everything? Everything, the, the chassis, we built it on our chassis table here. How many hours do you have in it fabricating the chassis? I've got about 3,000 hours in the whole truck. Oh God, oh my goodness. It's kind of overwhelming. It really is to look at. I mean, you know it because you built it, but for somebody like I built me it, who- it's still overwhelming. <sighs> all right, this is amazing. I, I can't wait to see this thing run. <laughs> I can't wait to, I'm, I'm I can't wait to see you drive it. I can't wait to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> We still have to make one more stop before the skid pad. But before we do, I have to ask, what motivates someone to come up with this crazy, mad, and brilliant monstrosity of a machine? When I was a little kid, I was obsessed with semi-trucks. So I'd make them honk, and I thought they were just cool because there's these big, strong diesel monsters. And I loved monster trucks and the sounds they made. And it was all just so raw and angry and everything was extreme and powerful. Everybody asks me, why do you call your shop Chuckles Garage? It's unconventional. Chuckles was my dad's nickname. My dad was a police officer for years and his name was Charles. Everybody called him Chuck and his CB handle was Chuckles. And so, you know, he passed in 2005 and I named my shop after him. My dad would always supply me with tools and give me things to mess around with, but I would never want to take apart the, the things he gave me. I would wait till they weren't paying attention or parents were left me to my own devices. I just never stopped taking apart. I first decided I wanted to be a fabricator when my dad taught me how to use my hands. Probably six, eight years old, my dad gave me a screwdriver and I, I had this epiphany that I could take these things and change them and do whatever I wanted. You just have to have the tools to do it. But when I really decided I want to be a fabricator, it's just when I got sick of doing stuff I hated for a paycheck and I wanted to be stoked to go to work. Like I never get up and say, I don't want to go to work. I'm always super pumped to go into the shop and like build rad stuff. The guys work 80 hour work weeks to save up and just so they can play with their car on the weekend. I get to do it every day. There is no better motivator than working a death trap corporate job. Scott knew this, left it behind, and created Chuckles Garage to satisfy his quest for speed. My road racing background goes back 20 years. I learned race car setup from driving and building my own race cars, trial and error. I just applied the knowledge I've learned throughout the years of building my own race cars and then the last 10 years owning my shop here, building tons of customer race cars and just applying my butt dyno knowledge and my practical engineering knowledge into something that really shouldn't exist. I tried with this truck to be everything that I want any vehicle to be. I want to be able to do whatever I want and I don't want it to fit in it any kind of genre or anything like that. It's its own entity. It's not a rat rod, it's not a hot rod, it's not dedicated land speed car, it's not a dedicated drift car, it's not a daily driver, but you can do anything you want in it. You can take it out and just party. I mean, have fun. But the real goal for this truck, I wanna be the first diesel powered truck to go 200 miles an hour in the measured mile. Scott said that he wanted to go 200 miles an hour in the mile. Personally, I just wanted a chance to slide this thing all over the place. Close. But you don't just get into this thing and turn the key. There's a system, a procedure if you will, that makes sure that when you put the sequential in gear, all systems point to go. We had been waiting all day for this thing to rip up the skid pad. Now, it was finally go time.
but goes from 200 horsepower to 1200 horsepower like within you know 800 rpm and it's a light switch it's nothing and then it's everything and all you have is mechanical grip this truck it's basically an amalgam of everything that i thought was awesome throughout life At this point in time, you, you steer with the rear and you, you drive it like an old Turbo Can-Am car. You just hope for grip and you squirt it when you think you can squirt it and you go. Watching Scott trying to wrestle Old Smokey was akin to seeing a cheetah trying to take down an elephant. The man was working behind the wheel. All right, so we just watched you go out there. It was, I don't know if you saw when you were coming around, but I was like, yes, this is the best thing in the world. It was pretty fun. So how gnarly is it to like, with that much torque and that much power to try to hold a drift with this thing? It's rough. You're working. Yeah, especially because we have the wrong spring rate in the back today and it's lifting the wheel, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Three days worth of track time off those tires. I've never seen anything destroy tires like this thing in my life. After a few minor adjustments, Scott and Old Smokey headed back out onto the skid pad for another run. Over 2,000 pound-feet of torque at the rear wheels means one thing. You are vaporizing tires, plain and simple. Getting ready to go out on the skid pad, extremely terrified. Now, I don't really care if you guys out there in internet world be like, oh, just man up. Over 2,000 pound feet of torque at the rear wheels, pedal travel that's that much, and a price tag of around 300K. Nervous. I am nervous. Shut up. <laughs> okay. There you go. What's your plan for driving? Stay alive. It was now my turn behind the wheel, and once my initial fear faded, I found that this 49 Ford was quite possibly the most mental thing I've ever driven. Consider what Scott did to Old Smokey to make it do what it does. The fact that this truck even exists at all is pretty damn remarkable. <laughs> America was built by hard work and big dreams. This truck, this is America. We got to go out and flog it on the skid pad, drive it on the street, and hang out with Scott all day, and it has been an amazing experience that we hope you guys have enjoyed. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of the House of Muscle. 
So just a reminder that episodes of the House of Muscle go live on MotorTrendOnDemand.com about a month before they go live on YouTube. So head on over there and check them out. This is the brand new Shelby GT350R, and this is a slightly modified 1966 Mustang Coupe. We're here to find out which one's faster. Dude, you got an LS7 in this thing. That thing's gonna have to be ridiculous. It's great for a production car, and it's very impressive. This is on a whole level. Each new episode of The House of Muscle premieres exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand.